The pre-alpha version of Paths of Peril is close to being finished and testers for the closed pre-alpha have already been selected and will be notified once testing begins. If you've missed out on the closed pre-alpha, do not fret. Paths of Peril will also be having an open alpha and open beta in the future. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the changes that have been made since the last devlog. The skills for Telemon have been finished, and they also have animations now. So when I throw my fireballs, I have animations with them. I am able to summon lightning on the ground to damage enemies. I have a utility to dodge enemies, so let me use that real quick. And then I also have my final special skill that launches a giant electric orb to kill a bunch of enemies. You're also going to see we have this new prototype enemy introduced, which is just a basic noob, and they're just trying to follow me and attack me. And they have some more advanced AI now that's a bit smarter than the AI you might have previously seen. So these AI are smart enough to, you know, not follow me into the void and kill themselves because they know there's no ground there for them to walk on, and they'll just chase me. Let me actually kill a bunch of them here We're using my orb. There we go, they're all dead. And as you can see, actually one of them dropped a player point, which is going to be one of the monetizable or purchasable currencies in the game for a bunch of other stuff. Of course, the functionality for it hasn't been implemented because this is just a pre-alpha, so there's no monetization, but that's going to be planned for the future. We have several new items as well. Let me just give myself one of them which is the cheeseburger. Let me give myself like 10 of these guys, and these will increase my attack speed, which basically just make my animations play faster. So that means I can throw fireballs faster now, I can summon my lightning faster, and I can throw my orb faster. So that's kind of what increasing the attack speed does to your character. And if I give myself, let's say, uh, 10,000 of these cheeseburgers, my attack speed will be incredibly fast, and I'm probably going to be limited by the frame rate in the game. So let's just see how many fireballs I can throw. Oh uh, yeah, I'm basically like a minigun now, throwing fireballs. There is another item called Cursed Flames. Let me give myself one of those, which will light enemies on fire when they're hit. So if I... Light an enemy on fire, there you go. Now he's on fire and he has this effect applied on him for a specific duration. Eventually it will burn out. But if this effect gets applied on, let's say, me, it'll pop up on the bottom left above the health bar, notifying me that I have a debuff currently applied. So actually to demonstrate that, let's give this item to the enemies in my game. Curse flames, let's give them one and let them hit me. There we go. Now I have this flame effect on me and it's causing damage on me and I can read about it, applies damage over time and disables health regeneration. So that's what this particular debuff does. And then once it wears out, it disappears from the applied effect on my character. A basic chat system has been implemented. So we disabled the default Roblox chat and now there's this other basic chat here that just kind of matches the theme of the UI. And of course the chat automatically disappears if there's no messages appearing or if you're not typing in it, but I can reopen it again to type in it again and if anybody else uh, types any messages or the server wants to spit out a message into the chat then it'll reappear back onto the screen. The teleporter boss event has also been scripted and added into the game so when I trigger the teleporter it's going to spawn a boss enemy that we're going to have to fight and then we're also going to have to charge up the teleporter. Let me just clear out these guys real quick before we start that. Alright and then let's go ahead and activate the teleporter. We get a new objective, we got to defeat the teleporter boss and we have to charge the teleporter. And when you go outside of the zone for charging the teleporter, it'll start flashing at you. And then this uh, UI element or this billboard UI is actually kind of unique as well because if you look away, it'll appear on your screen and it'll kind of show you the direction of where you need to go to charge the teleporter. That was kind of fun to make. Well, let's go ahead and kill this boss. You can see his health bar at the top of the screen as well. And eventually, once he dies, the objective for that will be complete. There we go. We have defeated the boss. And now we just need to finish charging up the teleporter. And then I'll just kill the rest of these guys here real quick. And there we go. The teleporter has finished charging. It gave us a reward item, just like in Risk of Rain 2. And we can go ahead and activate the teleporter for it to consume our ticks and give us some XP in return. So if I activate it... My ticks goes into the teleporter, it gives me some XP, and then we're teleporting to the next stage. 
And the next stage is this brand new kind of icy map terrain thing. I don't know what to call this map. I think we call it Arctic Alpines or something like that. But it's a kind of nice little neat icy map. Um, of course, there's not much on it except for like the little chests and stuff like that have spawned on the map. We're going to need to add more interactables in the future to kind of fill up the maps more. But this is kind of a nice big map with caves and such that you can go in and explore and try to find the teleporter, which is the current objective. We need to find and activate the teleporter. You might also notice that some enemies spawn with highlights over them. That's currently a placeholder. We're going to add a way to differentiate them uh, some other way in the future. But that highlight basically signifies that this particular enemy is an exalted enemy, which is our style of elite enemies uh, from Risk of Rain. So the highlighted enemies, they have more health, they do more damage, but they give you more rewards in return. And then these enemies also need to have their own, like, particular type of effect or affix, which is called in Risk of Rain 2. So some of the elites in the game, they leave like a fiery trail behind or they explode in an ice crystal on death. We're going to be implementing that in a future pre-alpha version, but you're going to see that these guys have a lot more health if I do a lightning strike. You can see those guys, they're the only ones that survive because they have more health than the rest of them. Um, eventually they'll die here and they give me a lot more rewards than those other guys did. And finally, one of my very skilled developers has made a song for the main menu of the game. If you want to listen to this full song, specifically made just for Paths of Peril, there will be a link to the SoundCloud for this song in the description below. So go ahead and show some love to Elliptical, one of the developers who made this song, because it is a banger. So, that is most of the changes made in the last month for Paths of Peril. Of course, there are a lot more changes and bug fixes and other things that were made, and I'm not going to mention them here because that would take way too long, but thank you to everyone for watching and supporting the development of Paths of Peril. Keep an eye out for an open alpha that will be coming out in the future once the game leaves pre-alpha.